All right, National Rosé Day is coming up, and the best way to celebrate is, you know, with some pink wine. And certified sommelier <laughs> Theo Rutherford is here to share some entry level, some mid tier, and some premium recommendations when it comes to the rosé. Hey, Theo. How are you? I am so good because now you have rosé. Yeah. And I think one thing that's right off the bat that people should understand: just because it's rosé does not mean it's going to be sweet. Correct. Actually, most rosés aren't sweet. Yeah. Um, that was a thing in the '90s that a lot of people actually went away from rosé because they were being made too sweet in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, we since dialed back a lot of that sugar. There still are some sweet ones out there. That's sure. not a bad thing. Right. No, no, no. Um, and you'll see a little bit of difference here where some a fruit comes through a little bit more in others. Uh -huh. um, but typically at this point, most rosés are going to be on the drier side. And I know a lot of people think rosé is just a summer wine. That is not true. Oh, I drink rosé well, year round. Too. I love it. Okay. It's yeah. I'm I'm not one of those that once it gets hot, then rosé comes out. If okay. it's if it's winter, I'll still drink it. Okay. And and different grapes, correct? Yeah. All of your very different grapes. Okay. So it all depends on sort of where you're from, and we'll get we'll get started with this. One. So okay. most of you have probably seen Yellowtail before. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, Yellowtail initially their rosé was one of those that was sweet. Sweet, yeah. So they stopped making the rosé a few years ago to sort of reinvent it and revamp it. And it's actually a little known thing about Yellowtail. It's actually a it's the number one imported Australian wine in the country. Has been for years at this mm -hmm. point, but it's also family owned. Um, so it's been family owned since it was launched, and it's still the same family that owns it. It's one of the largest wineries in all of Australia, but they are craftsmen with what they do. So don't let the $7 price point fool well, you. Well, that's okay. So it's funny you say that. Like, I stopped buying Yellowtail for mm -hmm. a while because I'm like, oh, it's cheap. I'm, I'm an adult now. I can buy a little <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And that's not a problem. I mean, no, don't, don't get me it, wrong. It's, I understand no. that. And yeah. we, you're not the only one, trust me. But that's a good rose. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I said, have not tried the rose before. They are, they are craftsmen with what they do. They're very, very good. They're very meticulous. Mm. Um, the guys, I mean, we literally, every once in a while, we'll call them and be like, how did, how did you? do that because that's <laughs> delicious yeah. um, so really cool fun one here again seven dollars won't break okay. your bank right. and you can drink this all summer all right. very, so very this happy. Is entry entry, entry level entry. Okay, like that's that. entry very level. good we like that now mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are starting to drink some bubbles, mm -hmm. which oh, yeah. I am not opposed to. I know graduations are coming up, um, and bubbles are always sort of a fun thing for that. Mm -hmm. yes. So Prosecco Rosé mm. is a new thing. So this year, the laws in Prosecco changed, so you could actually make a Rosé Prosecco. Oh, there before was laws before that, that you couldn't? Before then, you could make pink Prosecco, but you couldn't call it Prosecco. It was just Rosé bubbles, basically, from Italy. Oh. Uh, so the laws have since changed, and now we can actually do that. So I brought Josh for you. Uh, oh, now, Josh was founded by that. Joseph Carr. Uh, it was in honor of his dad. Uh, but the Prosecco itself actually was in a lot of honor of his late wife. Uh, oh. They loved traveling to Italy together, and she at one point was talking about wanting to make wine all over the world. And so this was a, an ability to sort of bring her memory back a little bit and do something for her. Um, sweet. So really lovely thing here. The uh, It's really easy to know the grapes in Prosecco, just Prosecco, uh, so <laughs> okay. super easy. It's also called Glera, but Prosecco works just fine. And then there's a little bit of Pinot Noir in there that gives it the color. But nice and bright, you get a little thing like nectarine, a little, a little bit of sweet, berry. But not too sweet. Yeah, there's just right. a touch of that fruit mm -hmm. that kind of comes in and brings mm -hmm. the sugar out yeah. a little bit. But the bubbles really give the acidity. It makes it a little elegant. And it's just one that, especially if you're celebrating anything, you can't do it without bubbles, right? right? Just the no. sound when you open no. the bottle is fun. And then we all, we like just about everything Josh right? does, though, you know, they, don't we? They don't make a bad wine. Our mm -hmm. winemaker is kind of crazy. He's yes. wonderful at what he does. 14 bucks. 14 bucks. Oh, okay. Great. Perfect. So moving up a little bit, but okay. not too much. And then last but not least, moving into a little bit more of the luxury at luxury at $20. Okay. So we're still not going to like not crazy. Yeah, right yeah. to the bank. We have Fleur de Paris. Now, I mean, Ooh. just looking at this bottle, you look at it and go, nope, I kind of want that. Um, <laughs> I love the wildflowers on the front. Mm -hmm. It actually means wildflowers. Oh, so when you go great. to the south of France, all of these lavender and wisteria bushes and everything else bloom around the same time that the grapes start to actually ripen. So it's just gorgeous. Okay. And that's why you get things like your Herbs de Provence that have lavender in it. Yeah. It's all because of all of that. Ah. And so this was really in honor of where we come from in the south of France. Okay, fantastic. Um, so a little Syrah, a little Grenache, a little bit of Cinso in this as well. So three very typical grapes from the south of France. It's going to be a little bit more dry, a little bit more floral. You're going to get a little bit of that rose on the nose, but you also get a little white peach and strawberry on the palate. This is one of those that, especially sitting Thank by you. the pool, anything along oh, those lines, yeah. it's one of my yes. absolute favorites. And you favorites. have to have the bottle sitting there so too, so pretty. they know how fancy right? you are, right? But just a really fun one. I don't know. This one has always been one of my favorites. Mm, so that's good too. They're all good. No, I see why. 
Wow, wow, yep. nice. This is really nice. Right, yeah. and some of these are just too good. Like I said, they're too good to just drink during the summer. Right, you'd, you'd have to drink them all year. Yeah, so I always have at least a couple of these on hand at home, just there? because. We'll say because, because you're because the, you're Theo. Well, Theo there is that. So we have to. Theo right? says keep them on hand, and we will. Exactly. Thank you, exactly. Theo. That was Theo, really thank fun. you so much. Thank, thank you for the lesson. Yeah, I appreciate it. Not a problem. National Rose Day, everybody.